So welcome back to Pathfinder session session nine, actually, of Fall of White Cliff, which is the first edition mini campaign we're running here. It's a heavily uh, adapted Fall of White Cliff, which has gone off rails and is my own thing at this point. Um, but we will start off with some character intros. We are down one player as Zed, the Tabaxi gunsling. Actually, he's not a Tabaxi because this is Pathfinder. Catfolk. Okay, that's easy. Catfolk gunslinger is a. Uh, is out today, so he will be in the back of the ship taking a nap, essentially. Uh, but everybody else, if you want to introduce your characters just from left to right on the roll 20. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Avery Boris Zephyr. Definitely in command of this uh, group of misfits. Wonderful misfits, might I add, but misfits nonetheless. Um. Absolutely. Um, next over. So, so you're the person who's in command. I just thought we were just going with whatever. That makes a lot of sense. But look, I got a pirate hat. By the way, my name's Ellie. Hi. Hi, I'm a sorcerer. Um, Starsoul. Uh, yeah. Hi. Isn't it pretty out? <sighs> that's a perfect segue over to Flora because I feel like that kind of attitude fits right in Hi, my name is Flora and apparently when you're built you drink lots of poison which astounds me I'm wearing all kinds of new things I have this weird not Rubik's Cube and a bunch of bottles of beer if anyone could please drink them because I'm trying to work on a super important project but first, we're going to go yell to head of Tavish. Oh, and hello, Ellie. How was your super long, irregularly long nap? Oh, I feel very well rested. The stars were calling me. I think it was my ancestors. I don't remember what they said, though. Every time I see you, I get the urge to eat a handful of raspberries. <laughs> no, I don't know why. Raspberries are really good. Did you know that, that you could put them on top of your fingers like little hats and then just and then just bite them off? Oh. No, I did not know that. I I don't eat them that I, way. I'm kind of surprised you did it because raspberries have that little divot where you could like put something inside of that little divot. So it's like a tiny tiny little bowl. I and always take put it on I always okay. take the raspberry and, you know, take each little piece apart. I thought you were supposed to, like, take them apart as you eat them. I never thought of that. I wonder how many little pieces you can take apart off a raspberry. They average about 30 to 50, depending on the size of the raspberry. Well, Laura this, looks incredibly surprised. This wonderful conversation <laughs> is making me want raspberries. <laughs> over to Grace. And... Well, uh, I am Grace, and I am now, some for some reason, craving raspberries. Um, I'm not sure as to why, but uh, my name is Grace. I am a gnome uh, sorcerer. Uh, I am a uh, blood sorcerer when it comes down to it, and I have ended up she kind of looks over at Avery. She's not in charge, but kind of guiding this group to um, help me with my cause. And uh, this is Hope. Hope is my summon. She is a giant dog who has red eyes and a red gem in the middle of her fore forehead, which matches the gem in the middle of my forehead and uh just don't um don't try to handle her if you've <laughs> never talked to her before let's just put it that way especially if you're a pirate hope just kind of looks over she's like in all fairness that guy was incredibly rude i i get i get he was rude but just don't go biting people. All right. And then shifting over is Zed, the sleepy cat folk. 
uh, who will find uh, kind of a bundle of netting in, on the back of the ship, uh, which is called the Drifting Star. When last we left our heroes, you had all purchased uh, a passageway um, in Snakeport, uh, which is kind of the island town, almost like Tortuga, uh, the pirate city or whatever. It's a, kind of, it's a little bit more lawful than like, a, like in the Pirates of the Caribbean or something, but... Um, it is self-governed by pirates, and so there are very few laws in here, uh, but because everybody is armed and it's kind of self-governed, most people don't put up for anything. So it's relatively safe if you don't start something, um, but un <laughs> unlike uh, recently there was a, a pirate attack from Marauders, which came in looking for different types of um, things, including the pirates were always saying, get the women. And luckily they were put down. And the next day after kind of a shopping episode slash um, hanging out in the city, uh, Zed was able to barter passageway or actually buy passageway on the ship, the Drifting Star, which is kind of more of a, uh, more of a freighter. It's like a barge, kind of wider, um, not super fast, um, but uh, between Grace and Zed kind of looking around at the different two options. Uh, this one was chosen and passageway is booked. And so the next morning, uh, as the party uh, boards the Drifting Star, uh, you see a familiar face of Tavish, which is one of the gypsy uh, smugglers, uh, which Flora knew growing up as a kid. And you will all uh, begin to just kind of know about the decks and because it was paid. You don't actually have any like chores to do. You're simply passengers. Um, but here you are. Uh, Zed finds a bundle of rigging uh, nets just on the ground, just kind of sits into it, tips his hat over his eyes, and falls fast asleep. And uh, there's a couple creaks as the, sh the ship begins to depart from the docks, and you are uh, on board. I will pass the speaking stick to you guys. Oh my god, Grace, no. Don't do it. How are you doing? Oh my gosh. You again. I never saw thought I'd see you again. Me too. Well, that's not true. There's always some sort of probable chance. But I didn't think it'd be so immediately. You got a ship that fast? Oh, uh, no. I'm just on the ship. I bartered my, my way across so I can get back to the mainland. Oh. I hope you got more because of the repairs we did. Repairs? What repairs? You know, when you sold your boat, I did some repairs on it. Yeah, sort of. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, Tavish, can I, can I get your help with something? Uh, maybe. What, what, what do you need? I have this project I'm working on. It requires people to drink all these bottles of beer. But I was told beer is poison. But only if you can drink it. Yeah. Can you drink it for me? Kid. I just nope. hear from the just hear from the front of the ship. No, they might have poison in them. It's not that they are poison. No no, but don't listen to her. It's poisonous and the kids shouldn't have them. And he tries to snatch them out of your hand. I just need the Bottles. Okay, can I set the bottles back, please? Yeah. Sure. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Looks up. How many are left in your like six pack or whatever? Uh, I think it's at this rate because Zed had two, Avery had one or two. Uh, I think it's like I think I have like three, or, two or three more left in there. Okay. So yeah, he he pulls one out, pops the lid off. Uh, and starts to take a swig. Immediately, there's a howl from the back of the ship, and she's like, Oh, no, you don't. No drinking on the job. I'm giving you a fair payment for your services in the form of transportation, and I won't have no drunk sailors on my ship. Tavish like, looks like a kicked puppy and like hands the open beer back to Flora and then grabs his mop. Flora just looks at the bottle confused. Uh, okay. I'm Looks so at... moved by his willingness to drink poison for you. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I 
fear she's drunk already. She's should getting I emotional. Just, should I just hold this for Tavish or over this? Not, what do I do with this? You know, I bet you if you put it in the water, it wouldn't harm the fish with how much it would be diluted. Just, just dump it. And if you want good luck, put a message in it and throw it overboard. But she needs the bottle. I need this for a project. She'll just start to pour the alcohol out over the side of the ship. Grace says nothing. She just, she just leans against the, um, she just leans against the the banister of the ship and Hope sits next to her, and they're just watching Avery to see if Avery will catch the fact that Flora is dumping out the alcohol. <laughs> She's just oh, waiting. Flora. Flora's gonna grab another, another bottle and follow suit unless someone tries to take it from her. <laughs> because this seems to be very efficient, unless someone wants more alcohol. It is efficient. That's why I suggested it. It would take way too long to drink that, and again, we're on a boat, falling over while drunk. Not a good idea. Tavish right. is not saying anything, but he's looking pleadingly at you as he's mopping up and he drinks the floor. <laughs> Flora still has two bottles, it's fine. So the ship is beginning to make its way. Uh, this uh, captain, she's blue skinned, kind of has pointy ears, uh, braided hair, and she's moving about the ship, setting the the sails by herself. Uh, she looks to be fairly proficient with the, with the water vehicle and is able to almost crew it on her own so long as it's good weather um, and you're all able to pretty much just lounge around. Is there anything you wish to do um, for the next couple hours as you voyage uh, through? Here, I'll put you on the map real quick. So you are leaving uh, Snakeport here and you are Can headed I... between these islands and going to be headed down towards the coast of here. Oh, actually, I'll draw this in because it's easier that way. Can um, I study her as she's doing it to try to figure out how exactly, what exactly goes into um, sailing a ship? Sure, you can... Roll, I guess it would be perception. So you were able to see uh, her, her very well trained movements and she's moving back and forth, adjusting the, the big sail. It's like a sailboat, basically. Um, so the, the giant arm kind of goes, tilts over to the side and she kind of ties it down, returns back to the rudder and steers the, the boat in a direction to kind of get off course a little bit and then adjust it so that the sail kind of swivels over on the arm back to the other side, uh, ties it back down and heads back to the rudder and continuously kind of zigzagging its way along with the wind, uh, which is starting to pick up once you get um, out of the port area and onto kind of more the open seas. Um, but today is a, a beautiful shining day. The, the water kind of sparkles and glistens in the sunlight and being on top deck, you feel the beating sun down on you. Um, at the very least, I will walk up to Flora and, uh, Flora dear, spare at least one of those for Tavish. poison but uh, like you said I guess they're not I, I don't know I'll keep one for Tavish whenever the ship is, or, or captain is okay so Grace um, are you in hope just kind of looking out over the boat over the at the water yeah just kind of um, watching the water watching the horizon um Hope's kind of sniffing the air, taking in being out on the boat. She's, you know, it's very few travels that they do by boat. They're typically on foot. So Hope looks 
like she's enjoying it even more than Grace. She's even got her her pot like her front legs are like up over the banister and kind of like her paws are like dangling down towards the water and she's like panting a little bit like looking down at her reflection like she's she's having a fairly she's actually having a really good time. Excellent. Well, I would like um, both Hope and if you want Grace as well, uh, whoever if you're both just kind of looking out over the water, roll a perception check, please. Sure. So here is Grace. Grace is at a 19, and Hope is at a 21. Perfect. So both of you can see that as you're approaching um, this kind of landmass, uh, which is rapidly coming up with the speed of the ship, it's it's not super fast, but you got a good wind behind you. And as you're coming up towards these islands on this side, um, you can see a plume of smoke kind of trailing up over one of the islands. Does it look like a full-on fire, or does it look like a campfire? It looks like something massive is ablaze. Potentially a ship fire, or it could be something on the island. It's not on this side, so... so from what you can tell, uh, the captain, uh, she is busy with kind of guiding the ship uh, with the sail and not really paying too much attention. Uh, Tavish is kind of moping around, keeping mostly to himself, unless you're trying to talk to him, but he's mopping the same area over and over again, basically. Do I know of that island? Uh, that would be rolling a, I'd say, geography check. I do not have a rank in that. How about a, a local knowledge? Um, sure, but I think I'm going to give you a penalty because you're probably not a local to any of these islands. I have a nature knowledge I could use. I also have history. I think history would make more sense than local. Okay. That's a 19. So for history, you would know that in these islands, there's lots of little fishing villages. Um, there's like, like what um, your captain is. Uh, her name is Hallie. I'm sure you would pick that up, but she's a sea elf uh, or an aquatic elf, and she might. There's probably some villages or tribes of those types of elves in this area that kind of live on the different islands. Uh, you would know that there's also like the pirates that you were experiencing, like you saw, kind of leaving the distance, or other um, uh, Avery and Zed saw kind of sailing off. They were headed in these directions, uh, so there could be pirate coves out here, or it could just be like a, a village. There's not really so many towns or ports out in these islands, but yeah, something's uh, on fire, and it's something large enough to be either a ship or settlement. You said her her name was Haley. Uh, Hallie, yeah. Hallie, um, uh, Grace will leave the the banister and tell Hope to keep an eye on the keep an eye on the smoke smoke and go track down Hallie. Yeah, she's uh, at the back where the rudder is. It's not an actual wheel. It's just this big stick that's uh, anchored down into the floor of the boat. Um, Hallie, a moment. Ah, what can I do for you, good paying uh, passenger? I was... <laughs> I was curious on if you uh, if you knew anything of what uh, may be causing that, and she will point out the large plume of smoke. Hold on a moment. Here, take this. And she's going to shove basically the rudder in your direction a little bit. And then she's okay. going to start actually running up uh, to the, the bow of the ship. So she runs past oh. uh, Tavish, runs past Flora, just kind of sidles next to you, and uh, jumps up to the front where Avery is. Goes around her. And he kind of looks up into the distance and sees the plume of smoke and a very worried look crosses her face. I I believe I need to make a pit stop. You'll have to pardon me. I'll give you partial refund. And she begins to run back to the back of the ship. I should make a note. I don't know how to drive. <laughs> oh, it's not going to crash. We're on the open seas. Here, give me. Okay. Um, and she's going to turn the boat and begin to shift 
before um, oh, I can do a different color. So instead of going around, she starts to turn the ship to go this way. And she tells everybody that they're, you're going to have to make a pit stop because her village is over here. And she needs to see what's going on. We're doing this. Could I try to make one healing potion? You may. Um, you have the empty bottles and the ingredients. Um, I will have you roll a check of some sort. Let me think of what would be. I guess craft. Do you have any intelligence uh, craft skills? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Yes! You do it! That's going to be a very, very good roll for it. So I'm sure you are successful. Just let me look at something really quick. Good roll. Yes! And what level is your healing spells? Level one. I only have my highest level is a level one healing spell. Okay, you are successful. You're able to create a healing potion. Um, or describe what it looks like. Um. Well, I guess I have the herbalism kit I bought from the sort of Seven Eleven from the Not Felix Tiefling. <laughs> uh, that combined with um. Glossa on Flora's shoulder. She just kind of puts it in there and kind of shakes it to get it all mixed up. And then thinks to herself about trying to I guess purify the substance inside. And she thinks about that saying everybody gets one. That she says with, with her healing hexes and she just focuses on the potion. And it just kind of turns this deep red color. Part of it is coming from some source in her mind she does not know, but it feels very familiar, though foreign. Familiar in her mind, but foreign in execution to make. But by the end of it, she has a bottle of red liquid, and she's just looking at it kind of confused. But Glossa chirps in, appro in approval, and in Flora goes, I guess I did it. Huh. So this um, empty, now recycled beer bottle kind of sloshes around. Uh, the cap, I presume instead of it being like an actual bottle cap, it's more of a cork um, that you'd find over in the, the village or the port city that you got these in. So you can kind of recork it up and you have a healing potion. And as, as this is kind of your wrapping up, you can see, hear the commotion. The, the captain kind of runs past you, um, kind of runs back on the other side of the ship. You can see Tavish kind of watching you curiously, but also watching the captain, and scratches his head. It's kind of getting a little bit yellow in the sun, or red in the sun from just too much sun. And what is Ellie doing? Ellie is staring at the potion, wondering if it tastes like raspberries. How about Avery? Um, Avery is just up as high as she can, feeling the wind that is not her own projection around her. And um, thinking about the last duel that she ever had, which was quite a while ago. You don't count the pirates? <laughs> For, lame. That wasn't a duel. And yeah, those pirates were lame. So, the uh, the ship is kind of like veering and lil lilting to the left a little bit uh, as it's curving around this first big island. Uh, and as you curve back around to kind of follow uh, along the side of this uh, kind of coastal region here, uh, there's a lo all, lots of little protruding rocks and, and islands capped with green and, and jungle trees and stuff like that um, and you can see there's a, a couple different areas where there's fishing villages and huts on the uh, the beach and a little bit inland uh, but none of them are, are on fire nothing that you can see on this side however in the distance you can see more trails of this kind of black smoke 
uh, uh, just lifting over the mountainside. And as you get closer and closer, the the ship that you're on, the Drifting Star, curves around uh, a bend, and you can see in the distance a fishing village on fire. Um, this is more or less what you see uh, in the distance. You're coming around from this side, uh, and in this cove here, there is a fire burning of, you know, there's straw huts and kind of mud brick that's all kind of broken down to the ground at this point. And no, there's not too many people left in sight, but this, this settlement here is destroyed. The captain, Hallie, she is very upset by this and begins to steer the ship towards it. And she says, this is my, my village. What's happened here? It's all gone. You think this fire could be natural? I mean, of course it's natural. What other kind of fire is there? I mean, magical, but no. Started from someone what? who doesn't like your folk? My folk hasn't provoked anybody. Um, it's a mystery. Is, is there somewhere that your village, the people would have gone? Or do you, do you think they're at the the village or do you think something else happened to them um i'm i'm going to dock the ship and as she um she steers the ship in a little bit you can see all of the docks and everything have been burned and there's just kind of wood debris everywhere um there is not really a safe place for her to dock the ship so she starts to sail towards the sandbar up here and she's just going to beach the ship instead unless anyone has anything that they want to try or stop her or anything um as soon as we start getting close enough, um, Grace will send Hope to the to the island. So Hope will jump off and swim towards the towards the island as they get a little closer to okay. be the first can, presence on the land. Can I keep an eye out for if there looks like there's any hostile beings in the area? Okay, you can make a perception check. And I'm gonna just use this as a boat representation. Oh my goodness! It's a healing potion. It's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I? I'm assuming Avery's probably like up in the up in the crow's nest. Would I be right to to think that? Well, there isn't actually a crow's nest on the ship. It's not there. There's a Aww. mast, so you can climb up and onto the rigging and stuff. There's a mast, but there's where uh, but there's no actual. She's at the very edge. She, she's at the very edge of the ship, tanking herself with the wind. I figured it was either that or up at the up at the top of the ship. Um, Grace would probably shout to Avery to try to get as best of a look as she can while she sends Hope. Okay, so Hope would be the first one to kind of get to the scene, um, but there's. There's several people who are kind of watching from the tree line just as the town burns. Um, they're blue-skinned elves, the aquatic elves. Um, there's some people that are still trying to salvage uh, some of the huts that are on fire, and they've been successfully kind of disroofed it by taking off all the palm leaves, and now it's just kind of a mud brick circular uh, box, and they'll all just have to put a new roof on it. So some of them have been saved, and there are some villagers still here. Um, but most of them have either scattered or there's people just kind of crying on the side of the, the beach um, and most of the area is destroyed. So Hope kind of gets in there, uh, swims up to the shore. Again, there's the, the surf kind of is coming in on the edge of the rocks over here. And as you get into more like the bay, it's a little calmer. But again, it's the, the docks are just rubble everywhere. And so you kind of have to swim around it. So hope if you would like to roll a athletics check for swim check actually because we actually have a swim, um, and then we'll get to the rest. Yes, and she has a rank in it, so it's a plus six, so it's a fifteen for hope. Okay, so hope is able to kind of navigate through this debris and get up to one of the burning uh, remains of the docks and kind of pull herself up out of the water. And as you emerge, kind of all sopping wet, you emerge through the kind of burning flames uh, and get back onto the dry parts of the land uh, and turn around to, to look at the wreckage 
and the dock just kind of crumbles into the water beneath you, and there's a hiss and just a plume of steam as the, the wood is extinguished. Um, over on the beach, the the kind of barge boat kind of lurches as it hits the sand and kind of pulls up onto the beach, and immediately um, the captain jumps out and asks for you all to help her pull it a little bit further onto shore. I will... I will oblige, and as we're doing this, as as we're doing this, I'm, uh, Avery will say, listen, Hallie, I I should know this. You don't have to do a damn thing for people to hate you. Now, I've done plenty of things for people to hate me, but that's not the point. I'm just wondering if it's those ruffians from yesterday, or at the back at Snakeport, And with a kind of team tug, you can all pull the ship uh, safely aboard. Um, For the perception, Avery, as you kind of look around, um, 13, you can see, again, the the town over here is on fire. There looks to be some movement in kind of the more jungle brush over there, but you think it's maybe the townsfolk, uh, those that remain. And as the, the ship is kind of beached, uh, Zed can and I, Havish are going to stay here. Please can I ask the own. captain really quick if there's any beings here other than her kind? Or, or is it like a mixed race that lives in this village? Uh, the, I mean, we're mostly elves. Um, if anything, there's traders. Some some people get married and bring in their spouses, but they, most of the time, people leave. They don't they don't stay here. But here, um, I'm, I'm going to go look. And then she starts to just take off down the beach towards it. Hope is uh, running along the docks, and her first priority is to make sure that no one is stuck in any of the places that are ablaze. So can she roll a perception check to make sure that everything is empty? You may. So go ahead and roll uh, for Hope a perception. Uh, Avery and the Captain Hallie are running towards it. And is anyone else accompanying as well? Or are you staying with the ship? Yeah. Okay, so Grace is following. I think a little faster, here. but uh, really that's not really important. <laughs> Your speed is matched by her determination. Heck yeah. What Heck is Flora? Yeah. Flora was, was following Ellie. She was going to try to make a second potion, but I was started rushing, and all this happened, so she's just trying to stay behind and help out where she can. Okay, Tavish just kind of waves from the ship and says, Don't, don't worry, I, I got this. Uh, before Flora goes she kind of like stops getting her feet turns around looks at Tavish hands him hands him and said each a ball of alcohol and says uh, <laughs> I'd like them back when you're done thank you and then run back ahead <laughs> there's no, there's no doubt Nicely Tavish done. Tavish is looking concerned over at the fire but without a doubt there's a pop and uh, he like ca- actually Zed would catch the cork from behind as it just sails up into the air, and then uh, Tavish just kind of climbs back aboard the boat, and you can t- see him taking a swig. Um, Hope, uh, you rolled a eighteen. You can tell that most of the the townsfolk have been able to evacuate out of the town or out of the burning buildings. There is one which is a two story building, and it looks to be more like the 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 tribe center or whatever. Um, and that is about to fall down inside. He's not stuck, but you can see an elder gathering suppl- or not supplies, but like, um, like iconography and like woven blankets that are stitched with like meaningful texts and stuff on it. And he's cool trying to get grab as much as he can, but it looks like the building's about to come down. Um, hope will message back to grace what's going on. And, um, Grace will relay to Hallie. Hallie, what what is this person's name? Uh, that's probably the elder. Okay, uh, I'm gonna send in Hope to to help him, and with that, Hope will uh, dash inside. Um, probably startling the poor man. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and she'll tell you his actual name. It's probably. Seagraves or something. Seagrave? His name is Seagraves. Uh, 
be grave. Though, so, um, so Hope would uh, would burst in and go, um, uh, Elder Seagraves, I'm I'm here to help, but we need to move quickly. Uh, roll a persuasion check, because he is very startled. But the success of your persuasion will be determining how uh... reactive he is. We don't have persuasion, so is that diplomacy? It is diplomacy, yes. Correct. Okay. That's a four. <laughs> so he not That's only is fair. startled, but his like um, his materials that he's collected kind of drop out from one arm, and he he like falls backwards a little bit. He catches himself, but he like holds a, what his free hand up and says, "No!" And then he kind of <laughs> realizes that you're a huge like canine, but you're not like savagely biting him and you just talk to him and he kind of like pulls himself up but then there's a creak and a groan and then i would like you to roll a dexterity saving throw or sorry reflex saving throw as part of the rift begins to cave in um and then i will also roll one for him that's a 20 for hope so 20 you are able to leap out of the way as uh these kind of ashen roof timbers kind of break down and crack uh, he fails his sex save. Uh, he falls backwards further into the building and is now trapped as uh, smolders uh, and smoke billows through everything. Uh, it's about this point that everybody else is getting up to the town, and you can see that there are a uh, couple families that are this watching from the sidelines, holding each other, crying a little bit. Um, mostly women and children, it looks like, and everything else is burned to the ground for the most part um you can see the roof cave in from where hope is and you hear kind of some crying from inside uh what does everybody want to do uh, it looks like the oh. captain is running straight for a specific like um home which is probably where her family lives i want to roll a perception again hopefully not looking at a beautiful potion bottle this time and see if there's anyone i can help okay Laura's going to go over to Grace and ask what the plan is right now. What the What's what is? Sorry. Oh, plan. What's the plan? <clears throat> I, know, I know the Pope ran off, and I, I know the Cap is going that way, and Tavish and Zed are, are watching the ship, but what, are, what do you want us to do? I think that it would be best if we try to help the townspeople as much as possible. It sounds like Hope's going to get somebody out of the um, out of the building there. She said she's got it under control, so she, theoretically she should be fine. Um, go <clears throat> see if you can help the townspeople. Okay. Um, Avery has gone. Uh, you said that there was like calls and crying from multiple places. Um, yeah, mostly almost like behind the town uh, into the, the jungle area. Take my action to head to the jungle and see what's the deal there. Okay. As you kind of break through the trees, and um, your your boots are kind of sloshing in the sand, and it's a little bit tough to get a, a fast move through the this area. But as soon as you kind of get towards where the brush is, you can pick up your speed and kind of run into the area. And I'd like you to roll perception check, please. Aesthetically, I have wraps, not boots, but. Still, my feet stuck anyway. Yeah, running in sand is actually probably is easier in wraps. Ah, it's the same. Thirteen. Okay, thirteen. Uh, it's enough to see that there, there's someone who's hiding off in the bushes, almost like not hiding maliciously, but like fearfully. Up ahead, you can see bodies. Uh, there are some slain villagers over here. Uh, mostly, they look like the more men, uh, like able-bodied men age. Um, there's some people who may have put up resistance and were killed, but their spear wounds and sword wounds, stuff like that. Uh, you count probably five or six bodies kind of in a, a clustered area where maybe a little skirmish happened. Uh, and you can see easily footprints uh, all over the area of people running back and forth. Um, you can see almost like the, the webbed feet of some of the aquatic uh, elves have been moving around and some more heavily clad boots uh, in the sand. 
kind of different types of footprints. Right. Does it look like there are any current silence, or has that passed in this area? What was that? Uh, like, um, in this area, does it look like there are any active assailants? Oh, or... assailants. No, um, assailants. you don't, well, you don't see any, um, you, you only hear kind of, uh, the kind of whimpering or there's some crying from up ahead in the trees where you can see there's someone laying on the ground with a big gash in their stomach and they're just kind of wailing. You can see some of like people huddled over the fallen and the, it just looks like kind of the aftermath of a battle. You don't see any assailants or anything like that. Right. Um, I guess I'll go to the one hidden location where I saw them. I just caught out of the corner of my eye uh, a uh, scared hider. Yep. And then I'll uh, approach quickly, but, you know, carefully. Once I get close enough, I don't want to rush in there. Okay. I was going to go help the townspeople with are they? Yeah, so if you go into the, the town again, there's, there's flames. There's people trying to put out the fires. Those are the first people that you see. Um, there's a couple of kids, probably younger than you, assisting, um, but they're trying to salvage one of the, the buildings and put out the flames, uh, one that's maybe spread through proximity rather than being torched. Um, but you can try to help them put that out, or if you want to try to find somebody who's injured, it's up to you on kind of how you want to help. Um, just let me know what you'd like to do. Flora's not really the strongest, and everybody gets one, so anybody she can find, she will heal a small amount. Okay. Um, now, are you trying to use magic or just kind of uh, skill healing? Um, my <clears throat> hex is one with hex, but I, I mean, I guess I could do medicine checks to see how everyone is. Yeah. Um, most of the people that are here, they're not specifically wounded. Uh, they're more trying to battle the flames. If you go into more of the tree area, that's where most of the wounded people are, which some have actual like blade wounds and some have burn wounds. Some are just coughing because they've inhaled too much smoke, that type of thing. Then I guess Flora would try to help um, in any way possible. Because it, it, I imagine they're like passing buckets to like toss on a fire. So Flora's helping pass buckets or trying to motion people out of somewhere. Okay. Trying to help the kids that are younger than her. Trying to help keep things calm. It's a bit overwhelming because there's so many people with sure. her sensitive so and think... heavily athletic side. So she's doing her best. So I think that's going to be actually just roll an initiative check. As kind of as you're trying to like lead the people, kind of get in and kind of help calm people down, guide them, and assist. Um, yeah, you're you kind of spring into action and kind of help get a more of an organized line with the like buckets and stuff. And because the of the way the harbor is on this side, there's like a stone a reinforced um, bank where you can just go right up, and then there's water really deep for like a ship could could have landed back with the docks and you use that as kind of the staging area to fill up the buckets so it's you don't have to run across the sand dunes over here uh and you just get a line started up once that's going you move over to try to see who's injured and you can begin to find out of yeah over where avery is there's more injured people um how about ellie what are you doing as you're getting up here well, I had rolled a perception earlier to see what was going on and what I could help with. I assume seeing people trying to put out fires, I would probably be assisting them with that. Okay. Yeah, with an 18, um, you can also see what looks to be a fire uh, at the top of the mountain up there. Not not like a blaze the same way down as this village, but uh, almost maybe like something the size of a campfire would be or, or maybe a, a chimney stack or something like that. So you do notice that along with um, kind of what Avery's found out and kind of what's going on here in the village as well. Um, does what's on top of the mountain look hazardous, like it might be spreading, or does it look like it is contained within a house? It looks more like something besides like what a house would be. Okay, for now I'm going to stick with this and then maybe mention it to some of the people around me asking what's going on and, and if if that's supposed to be smoking up there as well. Do I need to roll for getting information for that? Yeah, if you want to try to stop one of the villagers and stuff uh, and try to talk with them, you can roll. Maybe in. while passing buckets. 
Yeah. Um, you can roll a, I guess, diplomacy. I feel like there was another check for gather information, but I think that's 3.5. I'll just roll diplomacy. Yeah, 17. Diplomacy. Yeah, so they tell you that the only thing that's up there is the old temple. Um, but it's something. It's for uh, a deity which they pretty much no longer worship. Um, it's kind of more like a stone-built, moss-covered pyramid type thing, except it's it's not been really used ever. Like they just they have their uh, own not temple, but like worship circles down here in the village. Nobody goes up well, the mountain anymore. It looks like somebody's using it now. They look up and just kind of like, uh, I guess so. And then they just keep pouring the buckets on the water, on the fire. About for grace and hope. Hope you are, the, the beam just fell down and the elders on the other side. Um, he's trying to like get back up, but he's trapped inside. What does hope do? Um, so hope would like to roll a perception check to see if she can pinpoint where she could clear out the uh, the blockade without causing another collapse. Okay. Um, yeah, you can roll a perception check. That's a six. Um, so a third, if you could get a grip onto some of these beams that just fell, you could clear it but they're all on fire. There's no good handholds or, or bite holds or anything that you can really touch without exposing yourself to the fire. You could try jumping over it maybe, but you can't really see on the other side and a lot of the roof fell through too. So they're, he, the, the guy on the other side is surrounded and kind of trapped by all the flaming debris. Checking how prestidigitation works in Pathfinder to see if chill, warm flavor, clean color, or soil items. Can lift one pound. Only lift a pound. Let's just try to see if uh, if it can extinguish a flame. Cool if it could. Beyond just moving, cleaning, or soiling it. Oh. What I mean, very, you know where the fire is. If you can move the fire into the water slowly, bit by bit, because prestidigitation is a cantrip. Yeah, if you want to try it, you could. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that you get with um, with the summons is you can share a spell. So a summoner can cast, uh, basically cast through their summon. Mm -hmm. So Hope is going to ask uh, Grace for help, and she's going to cast Prestidigitation, and she's trying to maybe move the flame so she can get through it, get the guy, and get him through the the flame. Okay. So that. Yeah, I'd say also at this point, Grace probably is running up at the same time. So you're kind of getting to be looking into where the, I forget what the name of it. It's like the tribal center. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you, you get up to the point you can see, um, so you see Hope inside it kind of looking at the flames, trying to eyeball, can she get through it? And then she asks you for help and then you can probably uh, start to, I don't know, describe what it looks like as you're trying to like pull the flames out of a section for her. Uh, for hope to get eat it through or to move it, get a grip. So, uh, so Grace kind of takes a deep breath and hope mimics the breath and their breathing becomes in sync. And as hope's eyes close and then reopen, they actually match the deep. They go from the bright red to the deep dark brown of Grace, and from hope flows grace's magic and just slowly like parts the flames and then hope jumps through okay um he has to roll a acrobatics check for hope 23 
Okay. You land expertly uh, on a, over the, you jump over it. You, there's a moment where your paws touch the now extinguished flames and you have it's just a se second to look down. You have, find a place that's safe to land down and just kind of drop down on all fours. Um, the old man is kind of fallen over and he's trying to like shield himself from the flames and you're able to kind of grab him in your jaws or however you wish. Uh, and then looking back, there's still enough time from where Grace has doused the flames in just this like three foot section of the beam. Awesome. So Hope is going to um, say, okay, just, just move with me. And she's going to grab him basically by his shoulder and not hit him with her teeth but just pretty much help move him onto her back. And then she's going to say, hold on tight and just jump back through the, back through the flames, trying to time it. So he doesn't get hit by the flames. If anything, if they have to get hit by the flames, she's willing to lower herself into the flames to take the brunt of the heat and not let the old man get hurt. Okay. Well, Grace is actually sustaining the prestidigitation uh, actively focused on it to douse a little bit more of the flame. So you have the same window or even a little bit bigger as your as Grace is kind of spreading the the magic left and right at the same time to open the, the window for you. Um, so hope you can roll another acrobatics check. Um, it will be at a minus two because you've got uh, somebody that you're bringing with you, uh, but <coughs> feel free to go for it. That's another 23, so 21. An interesting fact, when she spoke to him, it sounded like a mix of her voice and Grace's voice, since Grace is channeling for her. That's cool. You need to get a voice mod, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so yeah, you, great, uh, Grace, you see Hope disappear through into the, the fiery <clears throat> blackness behind, and then a moment later, jump back through holding this uh, this elder and then you clear the, the building just as another rumble and, and more of the ceiling and wall falls down and on itself uh, which kind of helps to douse part of the flames but also exposes the inside walls and it just is a mess in there um, so that's what's going on over there um, Avery what are you doing? <laughs> You're kind of surrounding, seeing the wounded. You go back and find the, the younger uh, person. I'll just use her token for it if you wanted to go back. Um, sure. Um, so something I didn't realize is I can call some points that are uh, uh, at my command. So I will. I'm assuming I just usually have it on for aesthetic reasons, um, <laughs> for the aesthetic, uh, but I will uh, call the winds around me, so, and, uh, and then uh, get up to the hiding spot and just um, call with a calm voice that, um, hey, it's it's okay, there's no one out here that's going to hurt you anymore. Roll a diplomacy check. That I will. Uh, 18. So the, the younger girl, again, maybe like 12 or 13, kind of like looks up from the bushes and seeing kind of almost like glowing there with your your wind tunnel kind of flourishing yourself uh she kind of steps up and says the town's on fire they burned everything okay i'm gonna need you to explain what they are there was the marauders ship they they stopped off and, and they started lighting everything on fire Hmm. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. You can. She's I'm sorry. Expectantly at you. 
Do you want to come with me, or do you want to stay in your hiding spot until things have calmed down? But do you know where my ma or pa is? Uh, why don't you tell me what they look like, and I'll head to look for them. They, they, well, they look like me. Pa has uh, long black hair. Uh, ma has more silver. But, but I think our house is on fire. And she points, like, in the direction of the town. And that's where uh, Flora is is kind of defeating the flames on all kind of the exterior buildings uh, between having the stand, which she's now kind of, because you're getting further out of the region where the, the water is. So you start to have them grab buckets of sand and kind of douse it. And that's working to put out all the homesteads. So hope you're able to kind of more or less get the outer ring stabilized with the water buckets. And then Ellie, you're also helping with the buckets as well. Um, the fires in the town are almost done. It's just the docks, um, and you have like the boat houses and then the bigger, like the one that just collapsed. Those are the main things that were still going on at this point. Uh, Avery is going to, um, like gesture for the little girl to stay there and is going to, after, uh, Taking account of the area is going to dash back to the city to, or well, the oh, village to try and see if there's anyone inside that she can help. Okay. And she does summon. She does summon her winds back. Okay. Um, yeah. So Flora and Ellie, um, as you're putting out the fires in here, Avery's kind of coming up, um, and Grace and Hope are kind of coming up, escorting this elder guy, um, your captain of the ship. Um, Hallie, she's kind of nowhere to be found. She looks like she's gone off trying to find her, uh, her own family and stuff. But everything's kind of calming down a little bit. Like all the threat of the fl uh, flames are kind of being defeated. Um, kind of rescued the, the people who needed it. And there's just kind of a groan as another one of the boathouses collapses. But everything else is kind of saved. At this point, I would ask what happened to cause this intense fire. They were marauders. They came in. They lit things on fire. We tried to fend them off, but when, but they were, they were fighting out in the, the trees over there. And then I don't know what happened. They, they left. They were fighting in the trees? Aye. We were able to well, try Who were they fighting? The, uh, our... Our villagers were trying to fight off the marauders. In the trees? Yes, we, we were able to try to chase them out of, of our village, um, not before they lit everything ablaze, and then from there it just started to spread like wildfire. But we, were, we chased them into the trees, and then they started to fight back, and that's... I haven't gone over there yet. Hopefully they're, they're all dead. And the villager just spits on the ground. Um, what happened to the boat that they came on? They just dropped off people and kept going. Okay, you probably still have marauders on the island, still. Um, if that fire up there is anything to judge by. This guy looks <sighs> up towards there, and yeah, sure enough, you can see kind of a steady plume of smoke beginning to trail up into the sky. Um, try to account for all of the villagers. Yeah, the, the villager nods and just starts to try to uh, gather everybody to a circle. The elder kind of taps you on the shoulder, Hope, and, or actually Grace, rather. And he says, Your beast saved my life. I am in your debt. You are in no one's debt. She does what's right. Now tell us. Who, who hurt you, and where can we find them? I think it's one of the pirate ships. I don't know if it's from Snake Port or some other place with all the this unlawful, terrible plunderers. But these ones were these ones were straight evil. They came for no reason. They started to try to take people. They lit our sh our homes ablaze. 
Luckily, we're a fighting country, a fighting uh, people, and we were able to fend them off a little bit. But then the, the, everything was ablaze. We had to save as much as we could. Do you have anything of theirs um, that we could possibly use to track them? A, a piece of clothing, a, um, a a hat, and from the back you hear Hope go, an arm works too. Um, he doesn't know specifically, um, but if you would like to roll a, another diplomacy check, I guess, because there's no gather information skill, which makes me sad. 20. Uh, one of the people from the back um, kind of overhears you and says, there's some of them that are dead over in the tree line. And just just points and then kind of continues running off. Perfect. Hope. She goes, I'm, I'm on it. And Hope will take off towards the tree line to try to see if she can find the bodies and hopefully get like kind of a familiar scent of the... Um, of the ruffians so she can track them in the forest okay um as you kind of get over basically over here what are uh what's ellie doing ellie is looking for the rest of her group um and trying to converge together to to try to let them know that pirates have landed they were fighting in the trees but Nobody should be using what is considered an old temple in the mountains, but there seems to be smoke coming from it, so there's a high probability that there's pirates there. And to um, decide what we're going to do from there. Okay, and what about Flora? Flora is busy helping direct where to toss the buckets of sand. And making sure that when the fire looks extinguished, that the sand is um, is is, is uh, tamped down to make sure that the fire doesn't burst back up again. Okay. So all of you are able to successfully do that. For Hope and Grace, as you get over to this area, you can see that there are kind of wounded people that have made their way back to the city and kind of getting more... Um, first aid from everybody else in Flora and um, the people that are left uh, there you see a couple ones with kind of uh, netted, knitted blankets kind of draped over their faces for the ones that have been killed from the village but you also find a handful of bodies over here um, if you would like to roll perception all right That's a 10 for hope. Okay. Let me put these on for you. Uh, you find that there are two pirate bodies. Um, as you kind of roll them over, you don't recognize them. Um, one's kind of pretty well been stabbed by kind of like these spear weapons that they have, almost like harpoons, and he's been riddled with stab wounds, and he's fairly disfigured. Um, the other one, which is dead, um, looks to be like they broke his neck or something, like he'd been hit with a rock or maybe a branch or something, and then he's got stabbed a couple times when he was on the ground, but for the most part, you can just kind of roll him over and see. Um, he's a middle-aged human man, kind of big beard. Um, he's very piratey looking i guess um however with gray i oh know gray that's a 20 for the wrong thing uh is hope the only one looking um grace grace would probably be with her as well um assuming that everything else looks like it's under um it's under control if there looks like there's other help to be to be given grace would not have gone with hope Okay, if that's the case, then yeah, there's still stuff going on. Like, the fires are pretty much defeated, but now everybody's kind of gathering together to take stock of who's who, who's where, who's still up, and who's missing type thing. Um, so if you want to kind of help organize with that, then then yeah. Yeah, that's what Grace would be doing, and um, uh, Hope would be the one investigating the bodies. Okay. Um, 
so you can find that these two pirates um they're they're hard for hope to be able to identify as being connected with like say the other pirates from the other day um they're dead <laughs> what other information <laughs> are you trying to to get from them um just trying to pick apart like okay to pick apart uh to, trying to figure out okay is this um is this part of their group or is this part of the group that's attacking hope is not caring too much about the the people who attacked them before these are the, the priority whether they're related is a whole nother thing she wants to try to get a scent of these guys and track it okay for that um you can definitely deduce that there are these are not obviously the only people that attack the village so there's probably a handful of these guys left uh and you don't see like the tracks are all kinds of mis messed up with how many people have been over here but you do catch a scent of a trail going in towards the steeper mountains do i happen to see grace and hope before they go yeah, sure. You can, see, you can see as they kind of split off because Grace is staying in the town, in the village, um, but Hope is kind of going in for the trees. You can have seen that. Yeah. I, I, I definitely want to inform Grace the information too with, you know, everyone else. So, so she knows that there's potential for people to be up there in that building who shouldn't be because the villagers say they don't use it and no one's gone up there for a long time, yet there's smoke coming from Okay. That may be where our perpetrators are. It sounds like hope is caught a scent. And I'm assuming, DM, that uh, it is in the same direction. Yeah, you can, um, especially if you wanted to like ask around a little bit, there are trails kind of all over these mountains that they use for various hunting traps and whatnot. Um, and there are trails that kind of zigzag up the cliffs and the mountains up to the, the ridge there where the old temple is. So the tracks that the hope or the scent that hope's picked up is headed genuinely in that direction. Ellie, it seems like you're right. And it seems like hope can confirm that they're in that direction. Shall we make haste everyone? Uh, I want to know who uh, the god that they served before before we, you know, go up and attack them. What what god is it that they were serving? Can I get that information, please? I'll roll. Do you want me to roll for it? Yeah, I mean, you asking can, nearby. just asking, like, the, the guy that they, that um, Hope and Grace saved, like, he would easily tell you. Um, and they basically worship do do gozra i guess which is um a deity of kind of wind and water okay so it's not some evil deity that's gonna like smite us for encroaching upon their territory is uh you can roll a, yeah. a, a religion check if you want sure i'll roll a religion check because i have no idea who um knowledge religion i don't have training in it okay um history if you have that or or local or any of the kind of more people based knowledge is i don't think i have that either then i think uh ellie would just kind of here the, okay let's go storm the temple you know. <laughs> determination i need to make a stop first um and uh avery will take back running towards the hiding spot without Laura's any further going to, comment is, go is going to Think for a second, DM. I can't remember what the place I had to go to for my not Rubik's cube was called. Is this the place? Um, I'm trying to remember the name of that. One second. I have it on my sheet. I can pull it up. Real Put it Whis down under my notes. Whisperhead uh, told you that you needed to go to the temple of the old. Temple. 
I believe. Mm -hmm. Go to the Outsider Temple by the old car and Sapu will give you your answers. Uh, so this isn't uh, that place of the old cairn, so. Okay. So Avery, as you come around to come up, um, the girl isn't hiding anymore, but she's just kind of, kind of pale and just standing there watching kind of stuff happening over by the town. Um, yeah. So, I'll. Uh, she can probably hear my feet hitting the ground, and I'll come up and just hey. So, um. The fires are mostly gone, and it's safe to be back in the town. Uh, will you come with me to get you back to your people? She nods. Okay. Did then you I'll... find? Did you find my parents? There are. There was a lot of people running around, and I think I would get more help with you. Okay, if it's safe, I'll come. I promise it's safe. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, she will follow you back to the village. Um, and if there's kind of a head count going on. Uh, the Elder and some of the other people that are still actively doing things are kind of counting off everybody. And then um, before you are all about to head out, um, the elder comes back over and he says, Based off of what we can find, there are 13 people missing, and unfortunately about nine have been slain today. If there's still marauders out here, we can, we'd be happy to, to compensate you as we can. But if you can go find out if they've taken anyone, they were trying to take people when they were here in the village. Luckily, we were able to stop most of them from doing that. But if there's there's some of us missing, please find them. And he kind of, like, um, not kneels down, but kind of bows forwards uh, very low and just kind of extends uh, a staff up towards you. He says, you may take this. Uh, sure. Who's taking it, if anybody? I mean, I can, I can grab it, but I'm not going to use it for anything. Listen, Gramps. Uh, may I take a look at that? And uh, Grace will hold out her little hand high up to Avery. <laughs> yep. Yeah, here, here you go. Uh pass it off a little hastily. Listen, Gramps. She's you know where this little one's parents are? At least the mother. He looks down at the, the girl and with a very solemn expression, he says, they are among the missing. And then the little girl just looks very like pale. Like, doesn't say anything. If he's gonna... I didn't... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, I just got back. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was gonna say, if Flora is there by Avery and the girl, uh, Flora will try to hug her and comfort her. Yeah. It's it's kind of like hugging someone who just got into a car crash. Like she doesn't resist and is probably grateful for the hug, but doesn't really embrace you back or anything. You're just very, very shaken up. Um, and just got like some very scary news. Um, but she appreciates the hug. Yeah, Avery is going to kneel down to be as close to on her level as possible, and um, because you're join in on the hug. For some reason. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, Grace, you now have the staff at this point. Um, it's a very, it's kind of multicolors, 
kind of in the wood, but it's one solid piece, smoothed. It's almost like uh, been polished to the point, like if you move your hand up and down, it's almost like glass. Um, and there's kind of a blue inlaid um, twine, almost like crisscrossing each other through the whole length of the staff. And at the top, there's just a simple ball head uh, with a blue looking gem. Um, it's about the size of a quarter staff, so probably like almost seven foot tall, um, with the, the staff head being kind of this, the blue ball at the end. But it is very, uh, very beautiful uh, and looks to be a trophy weapon, if, if not anything more than that. Uh, Grace will ask the, the, the man, does this have anything to do with the temple? It was our seer's staff when we still used the temple. If they're up there, I'm sure it will bring you good luck and blessings. If not, hit them with it for us. That sounds like a very good idea. And she will turn to Flora and say, would you like to hit people with a blessed staff and offer her this staff? I like this Flora man. Looks... <laughs> You're asking Flora about the staff? I'm offering it to Flora so she can hit people with it. Flora will take the staff and look at it and try to swing it. And then just go, uh, all right, sure. I feel like a grown up with this giant staff. She'll poke the ground with it and and um, because it's the first thing I thought of, I'm, I'm going to go with it. Let my people go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does the C part? Uh, no, but Flora Thanks. finds it very well balanced, and you now have a plus one uh, quarter staff. Oh my god. Awesome. So Avery is going to look into the eyes of the little kid. Um... I was going to say, um, this is our mission now. We're going to get them back. We have to take care of them. We have to deal with the marauders. What's your name? My name is... And she coughs for a second. <clears throat> And she will tell you her name. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I did not uh, prep any of the PC names for this village. Quick, hang on, hang on. One thing I learned: type in a bunch of random letters and then add vowels to it, and that's her name. My name is Theola. How's that, Theola? Better than um, Gertrude. Oh, Gertrude. That was the funniest story I will have to tell y'all sometime. Alright, Theola. Your parents are coming back. Now, do you see that ship over, way over there on the shore? Okay. Uh, and as you point, I would like, let's have Flora roll percentile dice. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Why? What did I do? Ah, 69. Hey, nice. Okay. Um, the ship is still there. Uh, it looks like uh, Zed and Tavish are in the sand, rolling around in a scuffle. <laughs> oh no! Inebriated. <laughs> oh no, I bet Tavish tried to take his, his alcohol when he wasn't looking. Oh, oh no. God. Uh, okay, while we go on our brave and noble quest, I'm giving you a brave and noble quest to Theola. She just blinks up at you. Like, me? It's to watch these two. It's to watch these two. I just know it. If you can, try to get the cat one to follow us up the mountain. That's where we're going. <laughs> she looks over at them and just kind of like nods. Okay, I can do that. 
You've got this. And uh, I'll send her off with a little wink. Okay. Yep. She kind of uh, doesn't go right away. She just kind of watches them in the distance for a little bit, then looks back at the village and and over at the the, the elder. And as you're all preparing to go, um, you can all roll perception checks. All characters can. What do you want? Dun, dun, dun. Perception. Perception. Where's perception? Grace got a natural 20. Okay. 21, 22, 17. So pretty much, so everybody who's paying attention notices just like a couple tears start to trickle down her eyes, but then she starts to trudge towards the boat. Um, And then just as a point, we're at an hour, 20 minutes. um, So we could pause here and just have a short session, or if you guys want to start up the mountain, we can continue on a little bit. As much as I really don't want to leave Zed out of this, uh, this is not something that we would just leave alone. I think we would charge headlong into this. Okay, you guys were wrong. Out of it either. But I'm I'm really partial to what Avery is saying. Plus, if Zed and Tavish are getting into a scuffle, I don't know, I feel like it's not going to end as soon as Zed leaves, because I feel like Zed would, as a matter of pride, try to stand his ground against whatever situation they have brought upon themselves. Yep. Well, what's basically what happened is, is you guys are going to move ahead, or we'll pause and basically end the session, and then pick up next week. Um, to kind of finish this up with hopefully Noah be able to join in as that. Otherwise, you guys are going to go into the forest. She's going to go pick up Zed and whatever happens over there we'll find out next week uh, when Zed kind of catches up. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that the whole sending Theola over to deal with Zed and Tavish was like the transition thing between this and next session so that Zed catches up after getting knowledge. Uh, yeah, so I'm. I personally, my vote is to head straight up into the forest, up to up on the hill. Okay, so you want to keep playing for a little bit longer? That's my vote. So, okay. Just no, we just get up there, and all of a sudden, it's like an action movie, where he shows up and it's like, <laughs> "You're back!" It's like he didn't think I'd miss his party, did you? But it's a cat folk with a gun, so it's less it's actually in more. Oh my god, it's a cat with a gun. <laughs> Oh god, I, it's a cat with a gun. I hope Noah says that when we all <laughs> But but in like a really gruff manly voice that I can't do as I play an eighteen year old teethling girl, you know. <laughs> yeah, that one. We're healing for everyone. Okay. Everybody gets one. While this is happening, can uh can Flora after watching the girl run off think about how everybody gets one and try to make one more person? Uh, potion making would take probably at least half an hour, if not an hour. Um, okay. It says a day per thousand gold pieces worth of components that you need. So I would say it for uh, a level wait. one. Yeah. <laughs> but you wait. do have the one. So as you uh, begin to take off into the jungle, um, I imagine Hope being the, the canine in the group with the scent is in front. Um, is everybody just kind of running on after her, or what? Yes. Yeah. Avery, at least, would be trying to be as close behind her as possible. Okay. Forest following at a safe distance. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, I'm going to follow um, ahead as well, probably a little further behind Avery, because I don't think I'm quiet. Um, okay. So once we get closer... So is this marching order for you guys? Oh, uh, yeah. Something like that. Flora's going to practice whacking 
tree. That's how I... Yep, as you're going, you just whack, whack, whack. Uh, Practicing as she goes. Snack. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that sound effect was, that was funny. Um, so for Hope, I will need you to roll a survival check as you are trying to pick up the scent and just try to track these these um, marauders. Fifteen. Okay. Yep. You between the scent and then as you're kind of getting away from the village area and the little grove over here, um, the tracks in the sand and and pretty soon that turns into more like mosses and just uh, forest floor. You can see the tracks. Uh, and brambles that have been broken and trod on as kind of a fairly large group of people, it looks like, um, have been moving through this, uh, this passage or through the trees. Um, you come across a body as you come through a clearing, and it looks like there's been someone who had been shot in the back. Um, there's a the little, no, not little, he's like a, an elf man um, of some sort, probably in his mid-20s, uh, laying face down in the sand. And then the trail continues on. Um, what do you all do? Can I check for a pulse? Okay, you have to roll a medicine check. Or a heal check, rather, sorry. Heal. Okay. As you kind of touch down onto his neck, um, it seems to be warm. He is unconscious, but... Yeah, he's not dead. <laughs> Flora, he needs one. Just one. He needs one. He's warm, I Flora think. Flora will come over and uh, Flora will try medicine check and then do that. Or a heal check and then do that. Because sure. my heal is a six, so hopefully this is well. Sure. So you you kind of roll him over so he's not face down anymore and, and you kind of touch his neck again kind of where she had just done but kind of at a better angle and you do you can feel he's warm but there's no pulse. He is dead. Flora looks at him and she feels the pulse and she just you watch her eyes kind of go neutral and she says, No, he's dead. He's like a piece of dead wood. Except a piece of what is more useful than a dead body. And she'll close his eyes and then place his arms folded over his chest. That's he looks true. fairly peaceful dead... now that his wound is no longer exposed. That's not true. A dead body can give closure. Hmm. Maybe this one. Sometimes it just leads to trauma. Oh my gosh, my course have has such a cute, intricate pattern right there. Did you see that? The what? Sorry, the what? Look at this cute pattern on the, on this wooden course. It kind of looks like a flower. Are you trying to change the subject? Flora gets oh. is easily distracted, but yeah, that must be trying to transition from. Uh, oh god! Oh, uh, oh, oh. Oh, God, Flora. Oh, God, Flora. <laughs> I thought that was the transition back from Ancestor to Flora. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. It, the Ancestor was talking, and then Flora's like, Flowers! <gasps> so what does Hope do? Are you resuming the trail? Yeah, Hope wouldn't have broken trail if she can tell that it's dead just by a quick glance, and she wouldn't have stopped. Okay, but yeah, you're, you're moved ahead. How about Avery? Uh, with hope. Okay. And then uh, Grace? Uh, Grace is uh, breaking middle. Um, so hope can continue on. They can keep their, their... They're linked no matter where they are as long as they're on the same plane. Mm -hmm. um, so she's kind of hanging back um, waiting for Ellie and Flora. And then uh, we'll pick up the trail leading to follow Hope. So if she gets lost, she can ask Hope for directions and Hope can guide her back to the group. Okay. A after Flora confirms that he is dead, I say, okay, better hurry to make sure no more join him. Okay. And I will quickly catch, try to catch up or, or as much as I can to the group so I'm not too far lagging behind. Yep. You can all kind of become a party again as you make your ways back. 
um, it's kind of same marching order. You get to a shift in the path where hope uh, you see the trail kind of goes distinctly inwards uh, to the island and you begin to have a climb. Uh, this is probably, a, I would imagine, like at least a thousand foot in uh, elevation gain that you have to kind of go up this trail. Um, are you all wanting to go essentially full speed? Before we do that, I want to mark in the ground an arrow for any change in directions where we're going so Zed can catch up. Okay. And yes. not, get, Flora, got, not get lost on his way here. Flora will politely inter interject. Are you drawing an arrow in the sand? <laughs> yeah. So what, Zed if the, can catch up. What, if the, what if the wind blows and the arrow goes away because it's sand? With the trees all around us? Yes, because wind exists. Wind is everywhere. I'm Are sure Avery could say it better than me. There's sticks and stuff that are easily make a make a marker a, a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Laura mentioned sticks. What we could do is we could make an indentation in the sand and then put sticks and pebbles in it so Zed knows which way to go. In fact, because it said it was probably poisoned by the alcohol, we should probably spell out in tiny twigs and pebbles and sticks. Zed, we don't have time for that. Okay. And I and I make a quick impromptu sticks pointing this direction. Okay, roll a sleight of hand check for me. Uh, I'm not trained in it, but I'll roll it. Oh. <laughs> Laura roll an intelligence check on it. Well, I think oh, Ellie probably just like kind of we don't have time and just like puts the arrow or like some sticks in a in a point thing and just starts running back up the path. And yeah, Flora, if you want to try to like fix it up a little bit before you go, you can. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, you won't get lost. Thank God. Um. Yeah, your my sleight of hand's really bad too. But could I like spell out in tiny pebbles? Zed, go that way. Um, if you would like to spend the time to do so, you may. Is anybody else waiting for you? Unfortunately, no. I don't think. I think they went on ahead already. Okay. Uh. Oh wait. I had craft. I could just like. Could I use craft to craft an arrow in the sand that just points in that direction? That's what I should have done. Sure, you can roll a craft if you want to like, carve something into the tree or, or even the ground. Oh, that was a 19 on the dice. Uh, That's Flora, Flora will um, will just like create a little like a rough map out of sticks and then just like get a giant rock that that's in place a mountain and then a bunch of smaller twigs. No, actually, like like a, a little vine. From a tree that just like simulates the path they're taking in a little X. So it just kind of implies please go this way. That's the way we went. Yeah, and so then you, run off. So you're able to do so, but you're very far behind now at this point. <laughs> you can see them like up ahead, but it's kind of like uh, if you've ever done like hiking trails and like it's going up a cliff, they're, they're much further up the cliff than you are. The important thing is that when Zed goes, where the hell are... Oh, what's that? Pretty much. I can yeah. just hear Noah right now. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> just roll and tell us it's check. It's almost like a map. Nah. Nah. All my work for nothing. God, <laughs> it takes me far. But it is a very, it is very well-crafted map, to be sure. Flora's going to start rushing back. <laughs> okay. Um, now you are beginning to get up into the more thick, uh, dense trees. Uh, the path is again kind of opened up in advance. There are people who have moved up here. Um, there seems to have been another scuffle. And if what hope? What is your perception bonus? Uh, hope's perception bonus is a plus four. Yeah, so you just pretty much automatically know that there's a handful of people that have fallen off the trail down the cliffside, and you can see there's three more bodies um, 
probably about 100 feet below, that looks to be have gotten into a scuffle and fallen down. Tread carefully. She'll shout as she's leading the way. Meanwhile, Flora. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so if you just... Oh, oh, careful. Be careful. Okay. So you are proceeding. I'm going to copy you over. One moment. <gasps> New map. If New you... Map. If you can all roll for me, uh, it would be fortitude saving throws as you are uh, running full speed up the mountain trail. It is quite a lot of effort. Wait. That's fair. Fortitude. Fortitude. Hope's at six. Oh. Grace is at 17. Uh, fortitude. 15. I will look at those in a moment. I'm trying to grab my tokens. I wish that I had actually gotten a chance to get new tokens because these are not the same people that you fought before. Well, call 2.0. Make money. These are these are the better ones. That's why they weren't sent to the to the pirate town. Like that's the death after. wish to go there. Okay. <laughs> um, up ahead at the top of the trail, uh, you can see uh, stone structures. The it looks to be a carved stone, just kind of been stacked or assembled, and then some carved. Um, but it's all kind of a blocking, almost like a wall. You could climb it. It's not, there's lots of handholds and stuff on it, but there is a central passageway uh, with steps leading up to a door and kind of proceeding on and to what you can see just beyond it is a uh, larger structure, uh, what looks to be like a, a, almost like an Aztecan pyramid or something like that. Um, however, on this area, uh, let's review fortitudes. So Hope, you are panting. And I, I'm not, uh, Dieter, are you familiar with like exhaustion type stuff with Pathfinder? Uh, not familiar enough. Okay. Um, well, we will give uh, Hope minus two until you've had a chance to kind of recover. Um, okay. And then anybody else rolled low? Floor good, Ellie good, Grace good, Avery good. So everybody else is completely able to uh, maintain their their composure and kind of their breath um, but hope you've you've given it you're all running up this thing and you're you kind of get there ahead of everybody else at the same time um, and so you arrive and you're just kind of uh, panting um, for Flora uh, because you're coming up a little bit further for your initiative I will give you a minus four and I will like Great, my initiative will be a minus two. So that's that gives you still a fighting chance to to beat people, but it it kind of gives you the you were behind a little bit. So, uh, so if ever this was two. Oh, I rolled a one. Da 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 da. Nicked so good. Okay. Uh, if, is everybody in the turn tracker? I forgot to select my token. Just put me in as a one. I haven't rolled oh, anything gosh. yet. Hold on. Okay, Flora, you're in. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's fitting for how tired great, uh, Hope is. Initiative. So there is exhausted, but there is also fatigued, and fatigued is far less... Um, it's not supposed to be a huge giant penalty. So fatigued is, yeah, minus two. That's kind of what I was thinking. So, oh, floor, you're supposed to be a one, not a zero. Okay, how? Oh yeah, I think fatigued is what we're looking at. 
Okay. Um, as Hope kind of rounds the corner up here, uh, you see a single figure kind of stand in the doorway. He is holding a pistol. And in his hands, or in his like arm, is one of the villagers. How far away is he? Um, he's probably like 60 foot from the trailhead. Okay. And my initiative was before his, or is this how the initiative is? Um, let me walk? descend. So you uh, are first. I'm just going okay, to use... Okay, magic missile automatic, automatically hits the target, right? Yeah. Even if there's, like, a captive? Uh... In that case, what a wonderful time to use it. I'm going to magic... Okay, so uh, magic missile. I'm going to magic missile him. Yeah. Uh... I, I, did that actually do it? I don't know. <laughs> um, it does four force damage. I don't think you need to roll anything, so I think it just hits. Yeah. What does it look like as you cast magic missile? I, it automatically hits the target, but I'm, what? Yeah, it strikes so, unerringly. basically, the missile strikes irregularly, even if the target is in melee combat, so as long as it has total less than total cover or concealment. Um, a specific part of a creature can't be singled out. Ah, oh, oh, dang it, sorry. Um, hoping I could, like, the person freed. So, no, what, what are you I trying to specifically see, hit out of curiosity? I, I, if he was holding the villager, I was going to try to fold the hand back to, like, let the villager go. Um, but um, as I see him holding a villager, I automatically just, oh, no, prisoner captives. And I just instinctively just fire magic missile at it, just which I, I you all know what a magic missile is. Okay. My, 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 so Telling you what this is supposed to look like is really funny. I apologize. <laughs> You're totally fine. So it, yeah, it hits the guy, and from that he kind of like gets pushed back a little bit. Um, does not lose hold of the prisoner, and he still has the gun uh, pointed towards her. So uh, Grace. Uh. Grace is gonna step forward and see if the guy uh, notices her. Um, I don't believe any of you were really being extremely stealthy since you were running all the way up full speed. So yeah, he, he's, a, he's aware of you. Uh, Grace will, will hold up her hands in like a... Um, uh, in like a... Um, a non-threatening manner and say say hello we're we're just looking for some of the townspeople we need to take them home okay is that all you're are you moving forwards at all because there is I, the picture doesn't show exactly like the distance with the grid but he's it's about again 60 feet about 50 feet from to the stairs are you moving inwards at all um uh i'm just taking a she's basically just stepping out in front of the pack so it distance wise she'd probably close it by he says about 50 feet to the staircase she'd probably mm -hmm. close it to like 45 but then she'd stop there okay and are you trying to look unarmed and stuff Yes, which is probably difficult considering I have a bow and a, a quiver of arrows on my back, but I'm not reaching for anything. So my, my bow is still drawn across my body. Like, I'm not touching anything. Okay. So for when you're walking out, saying this, are your like, hands up in the air or like just not moving? Yeah. Okay. So you're you're coming out like, I mean, no harm type thing? Basically, yeah. 
trying okay. to be diplomatic about it. Okay. Um, and then a blast of magic kind of sails over across the distance and strikes him. You kind of like, we just want the villagers back. Um, his turn. <laughs> I, he just got hit. He looks over at Grace and then he's going to say, I'll trade you then. You for her. Uh, oh my god, can I call out? How about me? What? <laughs> Grace looks really confused, and uh, I will like look back at Avery, which is the most bewildered look on her face. Yeah, he's, he's, sorry, she's very willing. Take her instead. I am so and willing. She's quite and she's quite pretty, too. I am? Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh. take, take her. How about a trade for her? And she'll be gestured towards Avery, half <laughs> trying to convince herself that this is a good idea versus convincing the guy it's a good idea. Okay. The guy is going to... He, he's, his finger is still on a trigger and it's pointed at the elf's head. Um, but he points across with his free hand, kind of letting go of the girl for a moment, and points over in your direction. He says, Get your mage and your dog. Get out of here. You. And he, he points over towards uh, Avery. You can come to the middle of the clearing. Wraith will look over her shoulder and gesture to... Um, to hope uh, and hope will move to look like she's leaving and then she would like to roll a stealth check to hide okay sure no penalties because as soon as also, you start down the trail you're looking at like cover and stuff too okay so that's an 11 Adrian? yeah does Ellie have a little bit of cover too? It looks like she's kind of behind bushes. If you're in the grass, then there's like concealment, but not cover. There is a difference between concealment and cover. Okay. I'll, I'll just kind of take a, a step back until I'm concealed further, but not heading further down the trail and waiting for Flora to kind of hold her if, if she's coming up. Okay, um, so so Ellie and kind of Hope shrinking back. Flora gets up to this point. You you arrive and you see Hope kind of backing down along with Ellie. Um, what do you do? Um, I just got up there, so I'm gonna wait till my turn. But I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm here. What's going on? I whisper to her exactly what just happened. And then, can I just ready a magic missile in case I see need see the opportunity to use it? Okay. Um, what's Grace doing? Uh, Grace is still holding her ground. She's sent hope. She sent hope away, who is hiding nearby, but she has not been told to move or leave. So she's just standing with her arms up and she's watching Avery. Okay. And what is Avery doing? Avery has crossed 30 of the 50 feet of clearing and has stopped. Okay. Um, so just, I know the initiative turn order is open and we're going to keep initiative for if it kicks in, but until like shots start happening or attacks, um, we'll kind of put initiative on pause if that's fine. Um, gotcha. as soon as Avery kind of gets to the middle, he says, okay, that's far enough. Toss me your sword. this sure uh well probably not to him but flings it off to the side okay does avery have any other weapons visible like anything on like a uh, weapons belt or anything um there is a dagger Okay. Uh, yeah, he would shout for you to 
basically de-arm, take out all your weapons, toss them away. That is this knife. Can I roll perception on him on how healthy he looked and how much damage my uh, magic missile did to him? You may, yes. Do, 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 do. Perception. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, uh, he's got a kind of burn mark in his, his leather vest. It's almost like he's wearing a motorcycler type vest, um, but it is have a big scar in the, the shoulder now where you hit him. He doesn't seem to be too worse for wear for it. He's probably a bit of a burn mark and whatnot, and then we'll have to have it seen to later, but he's still up. Um, I would like to know if the captain has full line of sight of me or not. Um, because you... Avery is so tall, and I pro I'm probably, like, directly behind Avery. Probably not a direct line of sight. You're not hidden from him, but you... You'd have a chance if you wanted to do something. I do want to do something. And I want to be as subtle about it as I can. Okay. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to cast Mage Hand. And the way Mage Hand works in Pathfinder is it's not an actual hand. It's basically te uh, telepathy. A telekinesis? telekinesis? Telekinesis, yeah. It's basically telekinesis. So my goal would be to cast Mage Hand on Avery Sword and make it move as she's watching it just a little bit. So if she goes into combat, I can literally move her hand to her to be able to grab it. Okay. That move is... her sword to her. Now, what is your um, like components and stuff for that spell? Is it it's yes? verbal and somatic. Okay. Yes. So then, uh, yeah, if it's semantic, meaning you're moving your arms, I will need you to roll a stealth check. Okay. And I was hoping I could get a plus to it because I kind of have cover from Avery. Because there there will be a good. plus. Yes, there will okay. be a plus. I'll, you get a okay. plus too. I'll just let you add it. Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> oh Does anyone have inspiration? Because I feel like we're going to need it. Um, so. I don't have inspiration. Wait, does Bard... This, but... Does Bard give him... Am I, I'm... No, I'm not a Bard. You're not a Bard. They no, have... no, no, no one's a Bard here. Oh. No one's a bard here because someone thought being a bard would be useless. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Healing hex bad. I'm sorry, but healing and inspiration are equally good for different reasons. So, so inspiration is just bard song. And that's really inspiring. Just look at Carlotta. Thank you very much. Snap, snap, snap. Okay. Um. So you kind of move your hand a little bit actually have to move it at the elbow just more than you wanted to um the blade begins to inch back over i imagine avery probably tossed it like 10 feet and you begin to just kind of move it back towards her a little bit more um the pirate does nothing he shouts again for uh avery all right now come a little closer to the stairs make a nice easy trade-off I will. Okay. Not carefully. I will think slowly. I have all the confidence in the world behind me. Okay. Can I, can I try to, like, subtly roll her sword after her? Because I have 25 feet of movement that I can do with the, with the mage hand. So I want to slowly follow her and try to stay within that 25 feet. Yep. You can do so. Uh, it doesn't look like either he doesn't care or he hasn't noticed. It's kind of okay. hard for you to tell. Now, Ellie and Flora and Hope. Actually, is Hope actually kind of like sneaking up? Or are you completely out of sight? Uh, Hope is staying completely out of sight. Okay. And and just the uh, being just being very very alert, ears up, twitching, paying attention, smelling especially. So if they're if they're getting surrounded, she wants to be aware of it. Okay. Then you can also roll mm. a perception as well. So three perceptions: Hope, Flora, and El uh, Ellie, please. Uh, make sure my hopes. Mother. Perception, you said? Yes. <sighs> oh, jeez. I, I mean, how... not in a fight. <gasps> oh, Flora! I see, oh, I see all of my tiny, deeply nice. Yes. <laughs> Do you sense it with your 
spiritual sense. Yes. yes, my empathy tells me there's that there's something amiss, and I look in the direction of it and go, look at that. Okay. <laughs> Could she inform us of the uh, something amiss? Well, inform what, us. what happens is as you are getting to the front of the steps, Avery, um, Grace, you are still like 45 feet back from the steps and just kind of trailing the blade down across the forest floor, kind of following Avery. Um, both uh, Flora, actually Ellie, you know, you rolled to five, I'm sorry. But uh, Flora, your attention is drawn up. And as you see at the top of the stones, a couple muzzles are all pointed down uh, at Grace, it looks like, and Flora, uh, not, uh, Grace and, uh, and Avery, as there are four pirates up at the top of the stones, kind of prone, aiming down. Uh, and then as, Avery, you get to the bottom of the steps, the guy here up front kind of shoves the elf back to where another guy appears, grabbing her, and t passes the front guy, Annette, and he begins to swing his arm to throw the net at you. Ellie, if you had a held action, you would have the opportunity to have that go off. Um, yes, I did. Can um, Flora have moved closer to look and, whisper, and try to whisper out to Grace's situation? Um, you can be doing that. This is all, you're noticing as this is all happening. Um, Grace. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll type in chat. The person who I was going to target, I'll just keep, and it's just this main person up front. Okay. Yeah, um, the, the missile just kind of flourishes out from your outstretched fingers and hits him square in the chest, which causes him to, him to flinch a little bit as he's about to throw this net. Uh, Avery, you have clear visual on this happening. You will have a plus four to a reflex saving throw as he throws a net at you. Grace. So plus ten. <laughs> it was going to be a plus two, but he just got shot in the face with a magic missile. So. Yes. Yeah. Some, something's wrong. Tell Avery. I'm sure she'll get it. Something in my head tells me that she will. Just oh. tell her, Jenga. What do you think? Jenga. <laughs> Jenga. Okay, I will cast message because I have message as a cantrip to Avery and 26? say, "Yes, Jenga." Flora says, "Jenga." It's all coming down. Okay, um, so it is at this point, Avery with a twenty-six. How are you dodging this? A bolt of magic sails high above your head, hitting the guy. And he throws the net towards you. What do you do? Now, this net was kind of pathetic. Like, it, it got towards me, but no. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to front flip over it as I charge up with my dagger. Okay. So as um, soon as I see it, I start running up with a flip. Okay. Um, and you disarmed with your dagger, did you not? I suppose that what's required um i guess i'm looking for my rapier miss okay. grace mage hand so yeah. i i will have you roll an acrobatics check and a perception check to notice the rapier and then grace um flora is coming up behind whispering to you and flora can you say what you said again Benga. okay and then grace how are you reacting uh, very confused, and then I was told to tell Jenga to Avery, so I would okay. so you look... message her Jenga. Okay, <laughs> and then um, there are four blasts of fire, and that is where we shall stop for today. Oh no, we don't even know if she gets her sword! So, hold on. I did some somewhat decent, hopefully, damage on this person who looks like he was probably in charge. So. Yep, you you've done actually a significant amount of damage to him for not being in combat yet. So very well done. Um, but yes, Avery, awesome. you you see the blade and you are able to do a flip over the net or dust under it, whatever you'd like. Um, but yes. 
Um, that's. It's also half of my level one spells, but you know. Yes. So, I just can't look at this token without thinking biscuits anymore. I should change it. <laughs> Well, now it's Niskets. I was totally Niskets. thinking oh, no, 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 no. Call him Triscuit. Triscuits. Triscuits. Or Healthy cookies. but complicated. Cookies. Cookie. Yes. Biscuits. Cookie. Cookies. No. Cookie. Next one. Or Muffin. Muffin. <laughs> muffin. <laughs> Mr. Muffin. Okay. Mr. Muffin. So, Mr. Muffin. Mr. His, eating his curds and cleaning way. his Muffin. <laughs> Okay. And clean his musket. I would say way, but I don't know mm. if he would be. I, I think, think I like that's I need my curds and way. I think you guys. I'm gonna have us reroll initiative next uh, next game because no will hopefully be here. So. Oh, yeah. thank God. Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> as long as everybody's fine, I'm clearing this. And we'll I'm just, so glad uh... I don't have a one. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I rolled two ones on my initiative. Okay, like no. Oh God. So I shall the copy your thing, tokens. The important thing is that hopefully with my 19 crafted sand map, Zed can find this. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Adrian, a 16 plus 10 is 26. That's awesome. Oh yeah, that was that's an amazing roll. Did you take any damage, Avery? <laughs> Why are you at 19 health? The same thing. Out of 21. Because healing is, isn't um, nice is, in the Is game. this the same 24 hours as the marauders uh, in the bay? So, uh, let me change your map real quick. So you got um, to Snakeport in general, like after the cavern. You slept in the inn for one night. From there, the... That the morning of, or like early morning after your long rest, then you fought the pirates, okay. then you were in Snakeport for the day, and then you slept again, and then you got to the ship, and then from yeah. there, that's this day. If we did, then yes, I am back up to 21, because 19 plus 2 Which is, is 21. Which okay. is good. And so okay. plus 10 is 6, Avery can do basic math. Congratulations! Yay! So, um, yep, that's it for tonight. I uh, will end the recording, and hopefully the audio worked for this one. I'm actually worried that part of the partial audio didn't work because it seems to have kicked the microphone to a different one in the first part. But if it doesn't, it is what it is. I mean, I never could record games beforehand, so it's not like it's super bad. It's just, oh well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yep, yeah, have a good night, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Happy Sunday. It was lovely building. to see you all. Bye. Bye.